Hello, I'm starting one minute late, <laughs> but I'm really happy to be back here. And before I get to anything, I'm gonna put my candle here um, to set my intention, which is to be of service to our higher power, yours and mine. Um, and just happy to be back. Last week I took a uh, pause to um, to reflect on the sessions. Um, you know, as a codependent, we we really um, want um, approval, and and we think that we are of worth because of what we do for others. And so, um, for me to put myself in this position here, where which is that I'm offering you this without like, um, you know, like knowing if you are getting something out of it or not asking much from my audience, I guess. Uh, it's a really, it's a risk for a codependent for sure in recovery as I am. And so I had to stop and ask um, if folks were like taking um, good stuff out of this. And I got positive responses. Um, really happy to see Mickey again too. <laughs> Hola Mauro. Um, and and so and so this is the thing I was like well I don't have to do this for approval I don't have to live out of approval and as an adult I deserve to have feedback you know and I deserve to hear from others uh, words of appreciation and so uh, so how how can you do this in a way that is mature and is not codependent that was kind of like my my you know my quest and so um, and I think one of the 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 messages I got, I guess, is, um, and I want to bring that today as we read this chapter, is um, what is it that brings you pleasure and uh, what is it that feels like an expansion of your soul? And so I was thinking, yeah, like what if nobody says, yes, I want to, to hear this or this is useful, so I'm going to stop or what? And I was thinking like, well, uh, it's not like um, out of proportion to c reconsider this. But I also got to like ask myself if, if this is something that fulfills my heart and my purpose on this earth. And he was like, yeah, I mean, there is something about that too. And so uh, we're going to, I'm going to expand a little bit more about that today. Um, but the first thing I want to share as well is um, that I also did a pause um, because I was having some um, like challenges with my mental health. And of course, in this pandemic, it's very common. Like I would say, it's not helping, right? <laughs> and so um, I also had to like um, regroup and like ground myself because, and this is good if you're a codependent in recovery to take care of yourself because if you don't, you cannot serve others. So I really believe these sessions can be helpful and I do it from my heart. But if I'm not doing well, this it's not it's not gonna work, you know. So all of this is just saying that the practices of the book I am applying them to here, you see. And so I got this challenge with my depression and my anxiety, and I'm dealing with it, and I'm coping, and I'm uh, advocating for myself, and I'm I'm healing. And so um, that's part of it. And I wanted to um, think um, through with you all. Uh, how much of this codependency theme has helped you or not with your mental health? And so I want to I wanna tell you what I mean. Um, before I started to read about codependency and like realize some of the, the things that I've been doing to myself and to others, um, when I started that, it helped me to, to see more clear sort of my, my challenges in the, my mental health. And so when I was reading here and I was um, this like descriptions of anxiety from a codependent point of view, I was like, oh yeah, this is familiar to me. Like I get so anxious with my romantic attempts <laughs> that I have to um, severe my relationships because it's too strong. And I've, I've talked with other friends of mine that are codependent and they, um, so I've told you, some codependents just like stay with a person for years uh, that maybe is not the best decision, but some others like me, we just drop relationship after relationship because it's so intense, the suffering that we have and the choices that we make and the people that we choose that we just cannot 
you know, we cannot hold it. And I have had friends of mine that are codependent and, and come to me and say, oh my God, I just broke up with this person and I feel great. Like I feel, you know, alive again. And that is awesome. But of course, in, 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 in our nervous system, it's a relief because your anxiety, it's getting like the trigger of it is getting less. But that doesn't mean that you have dealt with your inner issues, you know? And so I know that now and I am always asking like, should I end this attempt or should I stay here and work on my issues and it's a constant dialogue you know and so for me working in codependency really helped me to um, discern my mental challenges and work on them and so um, I think maybe that could happen to you if you if you're going through this path and I just wanted to share that with you Um, and so the other so you know I always in these sessions give you some of the thoughts that I've had during the week and then I go deep into the chapter and so my third (laughs) reflection of this week um, has to do with this this perspective of doing things that gives you pleasure and so me and Mauricio too were were teachers Um, and so sometimes I mean I don't want to teach because I'm tired or because X and Y you know Um, And so I ask myself, okay, I cannot just quit, you know, (laughs) because I have a contract, I have to teach. But then I start asking myself, how is it to teach from a perspective of pleasure? And so what is it that gives me pleasure of teaching? And I was like, well, when I do my students or I invite my students to play games because I teach Spanish, for example, I really get out of it... um, a lot because I see them so engaged and so like having so much fun that I'm like yeah this is fulfilling and it's not this idea that because it's fulfilling for me it's selfish and so I'm not serving them because as I'm telling you where I am when I am focusing on this idea of pleasure I am a better teacher and so that has been in my mind a lot and I has it has to do with our chapter today which is have a little bit of affair with yourself like fell in love with yourself and it's uh, how is it that you can bring this perspective of pleasure to all the activities that you do so some of us are writing our dissertation for our degree and so we might not want to but what is it that where is the pleasure where, where can we find the pleasure where, where is that and so that we can do our activities that maybe we can just not drop um, from a pleasurable point of view and um, that was something that I've been trying in my life and I think it's really is really interesting and so now to dive in into the chapter um, this is have a love affair with yourself and so I'm gonna go over a little bit of the content um, and this starts with this idea that most codependents suffer from um, and I'm quoting here the vague but penetrating affliction low self-worth and so low self-worth I think is not always um, conscious or like it's not we're some of us are not um, of course you're welcome um, some of us are not ready to to say yeah I have low self-esteem you know because we don't we don't realize it especially I think in, in our society for example for men it's hard to say yes I have a like low self-esteem maybe uh, or as codependence because we have it together quote unquote because we're helping others and such and and we are like no I I really I really think of me like highly you know and so um how is it to think about your self-worth um from a perspective of the actions that you do so for example if you um I mean if you analyze what are the consequences of your actions maybe you can realize that you have self um like low steam, you know, low low self worth, and so if you have pair up with people um, that mistreat you or that cheat on you and they're like hurt you or you know are violent, any, so that is, you know, it's telling you that you have something here that tells you that you're not worth it, of of a good treatment, you see, um, I don't know if you choose if you're monogamous and you choose people that are uh, prone to like open relationships so of course you're gonna get hurt because you're not looking for that 
and you're trying to change the person i've done it <laughs> and it doesn't work of course and so um i at the beginning i was like no i have good good steam you know and then when i was analyzing my my patterns and like the things i've done to myself i was like yeah maybe i do have something going on there this idea that we don't matter and that our needs don't matter and so this is what she's saying here um to start with and um and so i want to just read this because i was like Ugh. Um, this idea that we even invite others to help us hate ourselves, such as when we allow certain people or religious um, customs to help us feel guilty or when we allow people to hurt us. And so those were the examples that she has for this. Um, and so I, I really relate with this that says um, we put ourselves in impossible situations, uh, then wonder why we can't get out. And this is a classic codependency thing. And so I'm going to give you an example because I always, you know, it's, it's easier if we see it in, in motion. Um, I would pair up with someone. I'm monogamous. I pair up with someone. And then that person um, starts to work very closely with someone that they like. And that, that person likes them back. And so and they go on, go on a trip. And they stay in the same hotel. And they stay in the same room. And I am like crying in my bed saying, how is it that I cannot deal with this? I feel so stupid. I feel so ashamed. I shouldn't be feeling this. And then here a friend comes and tells me like, but this is like a really challenging situation. I wouldn't take that from my partner. I wouldn't do it. And so I'm like, oh, so I think I am putting myself in a very difficult situation. And then I'm, I'm feeling shame about not coping you know so this is something that is very common with codependency which is that you put yourself in situations where you want to be friends with your ex and your and your ex is telling you all about their sex life and you're like i should be okay with this i should be listening to this and it's like why you're asking this to you to yourself like why is it that you you shouldn't not, if you're not good with this you're not feeling okay it's not okay the end um, and I've seen this a lot and in different ways, you know, and so this is really speaks to me, I think. Um, and so that makes us feel that we're not good enough, that we should be something different than what we are. And and so we dislike ourselves, you know, we think we we only are good if we sort of like serve others and do things for them. And we have talked about this so much that at some point, the codependent would be like, well, if I am not in service, why people would be with me if I don't do things for them? And so that means that you haven't find your, you found your like inner value just because you are, you know? And so um, that, that I think it's interesting. And it says here, um, people that insignificant as must go on an extra mile to be liked, an extra mile to be liked, and so I, I'm sure you have met people that go the extra mile to be liked, which is like they offer you too much that seems like disproportionate or do too much for a community or like just go into a room for the first time and they are like too much. They are like trying too much to be liked. I have, think I have been that person as well too. Um, and so that that is part of our codependency and the sad part of it is that it invites people to take advantage of us and that we resent them uh, we expect them unconsciously to say thank you and recognize us as like great saviors and they don't necessarily or um, or we get strong reactions of people asking us to back off because we are in people's business without any reason and so I think that is really interesting. And then um, I think something that she says here is that we're not good with criticism, criticism just because we have so little self-worth that any perceived attack threatens to annihilate us. And so remember we were talking about boundaries and like that how some people have issues with accepting our boundaries. I think we as codependents can have also challenges accepting other people's boundaries because when they say, hey, back off, we feel criticized 
and for us being criticized is like death is like um you know because we have this self-esteem that is like so low but also because our we're people pleasers you know we want to like be liked for what we do and that we do is good and so of course when someone tells us like hey this don't do this we would be like eh, the worst and and that is not cool because respecting people's boundaries is like the one thing we need to learn and we need to learn also to tell others to back off and so this is quite interesting too and um funny thing is that as codependents we're very critical um and we are great observers and so we have opinions about everyone and um that is what we do to ourselves ourselves so we are constantly like picking in all our little faults and this is interesting because she says here something that I read and I was like the only difference between codependence and the rest of the world is that the other people don't pick on themselves for being who they are and so that that is like strong you know um because we we yeah we know very well to some extent what we our faults and and we just like try to you know um go off with that and so that is not not great um and she says here and i was laughing the the people who look the most beautiful are the same of, as us the only difference is they're telling themselves they look good and they're letting themselves shine through and that is the same with the most profound the most intelligent blah 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 it's all the same it's just that we don't back up ourselves like we're not our friends and so that is that is what the message here and um close to the end but i just wanted to share a couple of more things here the positive ones which is uh what does it mean to be in love with yourself and she says here we're okay it's wonderful to be who we are uh our thoughts are okay our feelings are appropriate there is nothing wrong with us uh, if we have done wrong, which we have, that's okay. We were doing the best we could. And so that's something for us to remember. And then there's other message here too that I wanted to share, which is um, codependents are some of the most loving, generous, go good-hearted, and concerned people I know. And and I that's true, same. Remember, we are great workers. We are we have a big heart and so there is a lot of light in our personality it's just it gets twisted a little bit uh, for the service of this dependency that we have and so that is what we need to to change you know um so let me see what yeah so something that is uh, at play here is this idea of um how can we forgive ourselves for the things we have done uh, if you're codependent, maybe you have ended a relationship that you shouldn't or you have sustained a relationship too long that you shouldn't have, according to your, you know, reflection. Um, and all of these things, or you have done something for others that was extra and then you felt resentful, all of those things, how is it that we can learn to forget and, and like, um, not forget, to forgive <laughs> and so we remember we did those things but uh, we forgive you know and then we make amends and this is like a 12 step uh, program thing but how is it that you can do amends to yourself I think this is really really important and the thing I like the most is to commit to things for me so I was telling you one of my commitments now is uh, take this perspective of pleasure you know how is it that I can do everything I have to do with pleasure and extra things that I don't have to do but I want to with pleasure? Um, but the, this idea of honoring the self, which is that what she says here, honor the self, is okay, um, I commit myself to, and I have a friend of mine that is uh, like dating, and so she has committed herself to not change plans she has beforehand because of like someone wants to go out with her. And so that is a good one for me. Like if I am like hooked with someone and I really want to spend time with them, uh, I could drop any plans I have just because I want to see them. This is like a codependent thing. Uh, and so a commitment to myself would be like, I would not, not cancel plans with my friends or family or my dog. <laughs> if I have, uh, if someone all of a sudden comes and tells me they want to see me, 
um, just because I'm trying to have a romantic connection with them. And that, that kind of thing is like making amends with yourself. When you put yourself in the second place, now you put yourself in the front. Or as I was telling you, if you, you might be young, but if you're not polyamorous or open, or you're not into open relationships, don't do them, you know, because that is, that is the amend you need to do to yourself. And the opposite, if you are poly or you like open relationships, go for it and look for people that are doing that instead of like trying to convince the monogamous person to like change themselves or like, cause they would judge you. And so that doesn't work. And so I think that commitment, it's a, it's a good, good idea. And so to end with, um, she has an activity that says um, include the things you like or don't like about yourself. Um, and I think this is good for us to have a perspective of where we stand about ourselves. Um, but I also would say just do things that gives you pleasure. That would be my message for the day. Um, and that's it. Thank you for being here. Um, and see you next week with learn the art of acceptance which i think is great is the next chapter chapter 12